up nerds my name is leslie smith welcome or welcome back to the nerdy narrative on this channel i like to talk to you about all of the things that i read and all of the genres that i read in and there's a lot and i'm always adding new ones science fiction fantasy horror manga comics nonfiction classics literary fiction short stories and occasionally a poem or two on today's episode of fun i would like to share with you my top five favorite audiobook narrators now i should definitely preface this by saying audiobooks is something new that i have been getting into over the last year it's not something i've done for a whole long length of time so there are a lot for me yet to discover but these are the five audiobook narrators that I know that I love that I just get overjoyed anytime I get an audiobook and they're the narrator for. So right now, they are my top five. I would also 100% listen to a book simply because they narrated it. That's how much I love these guys. So let's jump in with my number one. Oh, we shouldn't do that. We should start from the bottom. And go to the top. In that case then, an honorable mention goes to Anjanu Ellis, who is the audiobook narrator for this collection of short stories by Zora Neale Hurston. This collection is called Hitting a Straight Lick with a Crooked Stick. Anjanu Ellis is an American actress. She also graduated from Tougaloo College, which is near where I come from over in Jackson, Mississippi. So I immediately felt a kindred spirit with her. She does an absolute amazing job of capturing the emotion and the essence of each of these stories. I sincerely hope that she is the narrator for more of Zora's work because I will definitely be checking her out. She is amazing. A lot of the dialect that Zora Neale Hurston uses in her writing is very confusing to read. For me, I was born and raised in the South and I understand it. I can read it just fine. But if you do have problems reading this type of dialect, audiobook is the way to go and Anjanu Ellis is top notch. I am sincerely hopeful as I continue reading through Zora Neale Hurston's work that I'm going to discover more by Anjanu Ellis. All right, so starting with number five favorite audiobook narrator, I first discovered her when I listened to the audiobook for Gideon the Ninth, and that is Moira Quirk. She is amazing. She absolutely captured Gideon and Harrow perfectly. Their snark, their wittiness, the implication of emotion behind some of their dialogue exchanges. Wonderful. Now this book, if you read it, there's a lot of characters and the way that the author interchanges between using their title of their house or their title like adept or cavalier or then their actual given name, she interchanges that a lot and it's very confusing. But Moira Quirk in the audiobook gives each of these multitude of characters a different sounding voice. The first time I read it, I was very confused with the characters, but when I listened to it, uh, but when I listened to the audiobook on a reread, it could be I remembered some of it, but I really felt I was able to distinguish the characters better because the audiobook narrator Moira Quirk gave them such a distinctive, different sound. Loved her. I am extremely stoked because I'm about to read Dark Age by Pierce Brown, which is the fifth book in the Red Rising series. And she is one of the audiobook narrators. I am so, I am so excited. I just, I just about died. And if I haven't mentioned yet, I am a big fan of immersion reading where I listen to the audiobook while reading my physical copy. So yes, my quirk, number five. Number four. James Marsters. You may know him as Spike in Buffy the Vampire Slayer series, but I know him as Harry Dresden. He narrates all of the audiobooks for the Dresden Files series. There was one that someone else did, but the fans revolted. So James Marsters went back and recorded that one on audiobook as well. Um, I first read through the Dresden Files in the physical book format, and then I followed up on a reread by listening to the audiobook by James Marshers. And he just absolutely does a wonderful job. This man acts 
with his voice. You know, he, I mean, of course, you know, he's an actor, but the way that he is able to use his voice to somehow show movement, expression, emotion, I, I don't know how to explain it other than you need to check him out. It is amazing. I want to say someone else mentioned recently that he's the audiobook narrator for something else that they read and they just kept saying, no, this isn't right. This, this is Harry Dresden. He doesn't belong here. So that is one negative thing, I guess, when you have the same narrator for an entire series. But again, there's nobody else that could do the Dresden Files other than James Marsters. And, and my next audiobook narrator is coming in at number three, but he and James Marsters are really neck and neck. They belong next to each other. But since I went with numbers, they had to get numbered. And that is Adam Gold. I experienced Adam Gold when I recently listened to Voice of War by Zach Argyle, which is his first book in his Threadlight series. Adam Gold knocked me on my tail with his amazing audiobook ability. He did wonderfully. He is, I dare say, a gentleman who is able to do a female voice well. It doesn't sound stupid or too simpering. It's done well. He doesn't try to make himself sound like a girl. He just ever so slightly changes how he talks. Uh, it's hard to describe, but if you have listened to anything by Adam Gold, you know exactly what I'm talking about. He can do such a range because this book by Zach Argyle has a lot of different characters with many different voices, old men, old women, scary characters, good characters. I just, the, and just, he just, uh, I, I was just absolute, I was just as amazed by Adam Gold's ability to narrate this book audibly as I was by Zach Argyle's writing. This was my first introduction to both of these guys and I am hooked. I'm hooked. Please let Adam Gold do the second book in the Threadlight series. Zach, please get Adam. Please get Adam. And coming in at number four favorite audible narrators, that is going to be Frank Muller. I first met Frank when I listened to the audiobook while I was reading Motherless Brooklyn by Jonathan Lethem. I absolutely fell in love with Frank instantly. This book, as you can tell, takes place in Brooklyn. Not only was Frank top notch with all of the different New York accents, he also was able to portray a main character that suffered from Tourette's that just really added to the overall story. This book is a comedy. It's hilarious. And Frank just added to that experience. Now, where I really, really fell in love with Frank is when I discovered he was the audiobook narrator for the Dark Tower series by Stephen King. Now I have unfortunately made it to the fifth book and Frank is no longer narrating. He suffered an accident and unfortunately was not able to continue the series, but it just really touched my heart to see that book five was dedicated to Frank Muller by Stephen King. But oh my goodness, I started reading the Dark Tower series and as I was making my way through, I wanted to do the immersive reading. So I think it was in book two, The Drawing of the Three, when I looked in my Libby app to see if the Audible book was available that I could read or listen while I walked dogs and cooked and stuff. I didn't even stop to see who the narrator was. I just hit play. And when I heard Frank's voice and immediately recognized it, I was overjoyed. I love him. I love him so much that Sadly, when I got Wolves of the Callow on Libby and it wasn't Frank, I couldn't do it. I can't listen to the audiobook for that one. And nothing against the gentleman that's narrating it. I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. To me, these characters are voiced by Frank. Frank was the voice of these characters and I just can't listen to anybody else do it. I. I'm so sorry. So the remaining Dark Tower series just won't be an immersive read for me. I'll live. But my number one top favorite audiobook narrator, the audiobook narrator who is responsible for me falling in love with audiobooks, 
who is responsible for getting me to actually be patient enough to learn how to listen to audiobooks and do immersion reading. That is Stephen Pacey, who I first met in the First Law Trilogy by Joe Ambercrombie. So here's what happened. I saw a video over on the channel, Steve Talks About Books and Stuff. He was announcing that they were doing a read along of the First Law Trilogy and doing a giveaway. Well, this trilogy was already on my radar and I decided I was gonna put my name in the hat. And I won. So excited. First time I've won a book on anything. Part of the deal with a giveaway is to participate in the read along. Okay, no problem. But any of you guys that have watched any of my TBR videos, you know I stack a huge load of books each month. Because I won the series halfway into the month, the only way I was going to have any chance of finishing the first book in the first month was to use the audiobook in conjunction with it. So I downloaded the Libby app, I checked it out from my library, and Stephen Pacey did the rest. He is amazing. I cannot imagine anybody else voicing these characters ever. I don't care if Stephen Pacey never does any other audiobooks for any other author, as long as he is the one who does Joe Ambercrombie's characters. He is amazing. And because I loved him so much, I decided that I was going to do my best to train my ears to actually pay attention to the audiobook. Well, Stephen Pacey made that easier. I loved his voice and his voices so much that I had no trouble paying attention. Most of the time, if I'm doing something with my hands, I can't multitask and listen at the same time, but I found my ears tone, tuned right into anything he was saying anytime I had him playing. And so I also got serious about learning how to do immersion reading and one of my dear friends, Penny, taught me how to do it and that was put your audiobook on its lowest speed and read along and do that for a few days and then slowly inch your way up to get your audiobook speed to match how fast your eyes can read across the page. While I was able to do that, I did back it down a little bit because I didn't want to distort Stephen Pacey's voice too much. And I found that for all of the audiobook narrators that I love, I don't want to make them sound too much like chipmunks. I like their voices. I just love the sound of their voices naturally. So I have found that most of the time I will still read on like 1.25 or 1.5 so that I can enjoy just the sound of their voices. It's just, I don't know. I just really love everything about these guys. I'm just looking forward to finding and discovering more books that they've done. Uh, like I said, you know, once I clear out some of these stacks of books that I have here on my physical unread TBR, I will do a search by these audiobook narrators and start working through their back. So guys, what I want to hear from you down in the comments, who are your favorite audiobook narrators? There are some that you love I didn't mention. Please put those in the comments down below for me, along with maybe your favorite book that's narrated by them so I can try them out. I would love to add more to this list. I would love to see if you have any you can recommend that might dethrone one of my current favorites. That would be fun. Guys, thank you so much for watching today. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already while you're on your way down to those comments to recommend me some more audiobook narrators. Do you do immersion reading? Have you tried it? Does it work for you? What are your thoughts? Guys, have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.